Welcome to Mode Bespoke, I'm Atenas. Today I've got a fun summary project for you all. So this is the Boho Halter Bralette. Let's get started. Get a copy of the PDF pattern for this project. It is available at modebespoke.com. The link is in the description box below. It is full of pictures, notes, and all the info you'll need to complete this project. To start today's project, you are gonna need two crochet bra liners. Now, this crochet bra liner, we're not gonna cover how to do it today because I have posted a video tutorial specifically for this liner. If you'd like to watch that tutorial, I will leave a link in the description box below. So go check that out. You're gonna need to make two of these and then we can get started on our project. Now, for this project, you can use any yarn and any hook you want. For those of you that are using the written pattern, you're gonna notice that I used a DK yarn and a 4.25 millimeter hook. Now again, you can use whatever yarn you have available. It does not have to be a 4.25 millimeter hook. Make sure you adjust the hook to match the yarn that you have. If you need help with that, you can always shoot me an email or leave me a comment down in the comment section below and I'll be happy to help. Now, once you have your two liners ready to go, you're going to need to pin these together. You're gonna to be crocheting a few rows right below the liners. So you're gonna to have to pin them in a way that fits you comfortably. And since we are all different in shape size, you're just gonna to have to play with it a little and pin them the way that you need them to be. I'm using a stitch marker. You can use pins, safety pins, whatever you have handy. And I'm just gonna pin mine together like this. Once you pin them together, try them on. So go stand in front of a mirror, hold them up, make sure that they fit the way you want them to because if you need a little extra support and they, these are a little too separate or you need to adjust it a bit, now is the time to do it. So. If you need a little more support or you need to hold everything a little tighter, you can overlap them. So you can pin them like this, overlap them together. It will still look great. So just make sure that you pin these in whatever way you need them so that they fit you comfortably. So if you need to pin them like this, I will show you how to crochet that. I'm just gonna pin mine a little bit separate like this, but let's get started here. So we're gonna begin on the bottom stitch. Let me, there we go. So the bottom stitch of the first liner, whatever liner you want to use, just make sure it is the bottom part of the, of the liner. Insert your hook into that first stitch. So here, let me get that because it's kind of a small stitch. And you're going to wrap your yarn around your hook. So just make a loop. So I'm using two threads of size one fingering yarn to make this particular project. So that's why you're going to see two threads. But once you make a loop on your hook, you're going to pull this top loop through the bottom loop, like so, and then you're just going to chain one. So wrap the yarn around your hook, and that's with the yarn tails and everything. Pull the top loop through the bottom loop for a chain. Now you're just going to drop your tail ends. We're not going to need these. And we're going to begin to single crochet. So beginning on the second stitch from your hook, you're going to single crochet all along the bottom part of the triangle. So make sure that you are holding your triangle the right way and that you are crocheting all along the bottom side. So beginning on the second stitch, let's insert our hook into the stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. Once you have your two loops on your hook, you're gonna yarn over and pull through both of those loops. There we go. So that was our single crochet. Now we're gonna work one more right in here into the next stitch together. So insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. When you have your two loops, you're gonna yarn over and we're gonna pull through both of those loops. So just like how we completed this single crochet, you're gonna complete a single crochet in every one of the stitches of the row. So just keep going until you reach the end of the triangle. Now, if you are crocheting your uh, two triangles together if they're overlapping we're going to crochet those a little bit differently so let me remove my stitch marker here and then I'll just show you what that will look like so those of you that are a little more advanced can just continue so if your triangles are overlapping like so you're just gonna crochet these two together so just insert your hook into the stitch like you would if you only had the one liner so make sure that you line them up the way you need to there we go so that way they are completely even all right, so insert your hook into the stitch and you're just gonna single crochet. So yarn over, pull up a loop, and then you're gonna yarn over and pull through two. And that's it. Then you just single crochet in every stitch after that. 
and along that second triangle as well. So you're just going to crochet a single crochet throughout this entire row. Once you've completed this first row, and just for the sake of the tutorial, I only worked in the front triangle, just to show you how to join the two triangles together. You're going to grab your second triangle and make sure it's pointing in the same direction as the first one, all right? You're going to be working on the bottom part. We're going to single crochet right into that first stitch right here of that second triangle. So you're going to insert your hook into the stitch. Let me grab my yarn real quick. We're going to yarn over and we need to make this stitch really tight so that we don't have any space between these two triangles. So yarn over, pull up a loop, and you're going to pull on this really, really tight. You want this as tight as you can get that. So let's pull on the yarn and we're going to yarn over and pull through those two loops. And again, you're going to do this really tightly. There we go. So now that you've joined the two triangles for all of you that didn't overlap them, all you do now is just complete the rest of the row in single crochets. So let me complete this and I'll see you again in a moment. All right. So once you complete your row, wait, that's not right. There we go. Once you've completed your row, you're going to complete a few more rows of single crochet. Now I say a few more because it depends on your bust size. So let's get started with another row and then um, I'll cover what the different sizes are going to be. So chain one and then you're going to turn your work around. Beginning on the very first stitch of the row, you're going to begin with a single crochet. And all you're going to do now is just single crochet all the way across. Since you've already joined your triangles, this one's going to be really quite easy. So see, once you've completed your second row, you're ready to move on to this next section of the, of the project. So now, I'm going to crochet a total of four single crochet rows. So far, I'm on row number two. You're going to complete at least four rows. So repeat this two more times. So repeat row number two two more times so you have a total of four single crochet rows. And then using a safety pin, a bobby pin, whatever you have, place it at the end and then try on the top. So here's where our patterns might be a little different. So try it on. Now if you are an A or a B cup, you might just need the four rows at the bottom to have enough support to hold the top up. If you are a C cup or larger, you might need to crochet an additional two rows of single crochet to have enough support to hold the top up. So um, try it on, decide whether you want four or six rows before moving on to this next section. So I didn't give you a specific number simply because it just depends on how you want this top to fit. So once you have completed your four or six rows of double crochets, we are ready for this next part. Now the next one is called the Solomon's Grid. This is a stitch that we covered last week, but we're going to do a really quick review here. So you begin with a chain three, and then you're going to turn your work around. And then we're going to begin with a Solomon's Knot. Now we're going to move a little quickly here. I posted a tutorial. Please watch that tutorial if you need to watch this a little bit more slowly. All right, so we are extending our stitch. So the stitch that was on our hook. We're going to use our finger as a placeholder and then we're going to slip stitch. So we brought that top loop through the bottom. We're going to replace our finger with the hook. So just push that through into that same space where our finger was. We're going to insert our hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then we're going to single crochet. So we're going to yarn over and pull through the two loops on our hook. So yarn over and pull through both of these loops. And now we just tighten up our stitch and there's our Solomon's knot. To complete the Solomon's grid, we're going to skip three stitches and we're going to uh, double crochet in the fourth stitch. So skip three and double crochet in stitch number four. So to double crochet, you're going to yarn over and then you're going to insert your hook into stitch number four. And you're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. And then we're going to yarn over and pull through two of the loops on our hook. So yarn over, pull through two, and then you're going to yarn over and pull through the remaining two loops on your hook. So yarn over and pull through two. And that was a double crochet. So that's all you need to really know in order to complete the Solomon's, um, the Solomon's grid. We're just going to repeat this over and over. So beginning with the Solomon's knot, you're going to do the Solomon's knot and then a double crochet. So Solomon's knot, skip three, double crochet. Solomon's knot, skip three, double crochet. So we're going to complete this until you get to the end of the row. So just crochet this all the way along the bottom part 
We're going to make four rows of this for those of you that are a little more advanced. So complete four rows and then two rows of single crochet and you'll be done with this section of the halter top. Now for those of you that are watching the tutorial and we're doing this step by step, we're going to keep working um, a few more stitches here along the bottom part just so you can see it. But this stitch, as you may know if you watched last week's tutorial, it is worked in multiples of four. You might not have enough stitches to complete the full row and to make a perfect um, four stitch end. That's okay though, I will show you how to fix that in case you don't have enough stitches. So continuing on, we're going to make a Solomon's Knot. All right, we're gonna skip three stitches and then we're gonna go into stitch number four. So we're gonna count one, two, three. Yeah, that is stitch number four. We're gonna double crochet into that stitch. And then we repeat. So we extend our stitch, make a Solomon's knot. We're gonna skip three stitches and we double crochet in stitch number four. So continue working the Solomon's grid until you uh, until you get to the end of the row. So if you can complete uh, the last stitch is a double crochet, perfect. If not, just work as far as you can. So if you, are, if you are left with anywhere between one to three stitches at the end of the row, don't worry about it. I'll show you how you can fix that. So complete your row. I'll see you for those last few stitches. All right, so I've reached the end and I've left five stitches so you can see. So let's say that you have left with two stitches. So if you're left with two or three stitches, you're gonna do the same process. You're gonna complete a Solomon's knot and then you're gonna skip either one or two stitches depending on what you're left with. And you're gonna double crochet in the final stitch so that your the end will look like this. So you'll just have just the double crochet at the very end of the row. Now, let me remove this stitch real quick. And then since I left five stitches, I'm gonna complete the uh, my Solomon's stitch and then leave just the one stitch at the end. So let me complete my double crochet here. And then for those of you that were left with just one last stitch here at the end of the row, all you need to do is just double crochet in that final stitch. All right, and we're gonna yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and there we go. If you're a little worried about that last double crochet, don't stress it. We still have to crochet the back ties and those stitches are gonna cover up this extra double crochet. So you won't even notice that it's there. So don't worry about it. Just complete the row to the best of your ability and then we're gonna complete the, the rest of the Solomon's grid. All right, so now that we've completed this row, we're just gonna complete another three rows of Solomon's grid. So let's start this next row and then I'll leave you to it. So we're gonna begin with a chain three and then you're gonna turn your work around. So you're gonna crochet a Solomon's knot above the Solomon's knot from the previous row. So we're gonna extend our stitch, create the knot, and we are gonna skip to this second double crochet of the row. So this one right here. You're not gonna work into the first two, you skip those as well as the first Solomon's knot. So all of the double crochets you crochet in the next three rows are gonna be above the double crochet of the previous row. So I'm gonna double crochet into this stitch so that everything stacks up like this. Now for this next one, we're also gonna make the knot. There we go. And then we're gonna skip the knot from the previous row and we're gonna double crochet in the double crochet of the previous row. I feel like I keep saying previous row, but I mean, that's that's where we're working, so I don't, I don't have much of a choice. All right, so continue working this same st um, stitch. Once you get to the end of the stitch, you're gonna work your final double crochet in the top stitch of your chain three of the previous row. See, there it is again. All right, so crochet your last stitch in this one, and then just repeat two more times until you have a total of four uh, rows of Solomon's grid. So here we go, I've completed a total of four rows. It's looking so pretty. Okay, now for this next part, we're just gonna complete two rows of single crochets. The first row of our single crochet is gonna be a little different than the second row. So for the first row, you chain one, and then we're gonna begin right here in this tiny little stitch. So you're gonna single crochet here, and you're gonna single crochet here. Inside of the knot, you're gonna make two single crochets. So let me get everything here all set up again. 
So let's begin here with this first stitch. We're going to single crochet here. We're going to single crochet in the stitch right next to it. Now, if that stitch is too small, you can skip it and you can single crochet three into the knot instead. So you just have to work four stitches to, to keep the same stitch count. All right, so now I'm at the knot. Since I crocheted in that previous stitch, I'm going to just make two single crochets into this stitch. And there we go. And now we just repeat. So we single crochet into the first stitch. So right here, single crochet into the second stitch, and then two single crochets in the knot. So keep working this same pattern until you get to the end of the row. Once you reach the end of the row, all you need to do is just chain one, turn your work around, and work a row of single crochets. So complete both of those rows. I will see you in just a moment. And now we've got the bottom part done. So that was the probably the most difficult part of this entire pattern. So let's move on to the back ties. So we're going to work both of them are going to be very similar, except that one is going to have the buttonholes and the other one is going to be the long tie. So this is the one that's going to wrap around your back and you're going to attach the buttons to it. All right, so both sides are going to begin the same way. So we're going to begin with a chain one. And then in the next three stitches, we're going to single crochet. So we're going to single crochet all the way. So you reach the bottom part of the bra liner. So these four rows of single crochets or six if you made six. So let's begin here with our three single crochets. So we begin with the first one. So we got one, two, and then I've got another one right here. So three. And in that space that we're going to hit here in just a second. So in these big stitches, you're going to crochet two in here. So there's going to be two single crochet, two single crochet, two, and so forth until you get across this wide part. But So here's the wide stitch. We've got two single crochets. You're going to see this stitch right here right next to it. Single crochet into that one as well. There we go. And then single crochet in this large space. So there's one, two. Single crochet right here into that stitch. And then we got two single crochets in the large stitch. Single crochet in this small stitch. We got two more single crochets here. And then I'm going to crochet a single crochet in each of the stitches until I get to the bottom of the bra liner. So again, this part might be a little different. So if you stitched four, then you're going to do four single crochets. If you made six rows then you're going to do six double crochets or sorry single crochets but once you have completed this row you're going to chain one turn this around and all you do now is crochet two rows of single crochet so beginning on the first stitch of the row you crochet one single crochet and you're going to make one in every every stitch of the row until you get to that last stitch chain one and then repeat so that you have a total of three rows of single crochets Once you've got your three rows, we're going to begin a decrease row. So we're going to make three decrease rows, and we'll need to begin with a chain one. We're going to turn our work around, and we're going to begin with a decrease. So beginning with these first two stitches, we need to crochet these two together to make to turn them into one stitch, because we want to narrow down the, the strap a little bit. So insert your hook into the first stitch, and yarn over, pull up a loop insert your hook into the second stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop so that you have three loops on your hook. Once you have all three loops, you're going to yarn over and pull through all three of them. And there you go. That was a decrease. Now we're going to continue to single crochet into every stitch along the rest of the row until you have two stitches left. So single crochet until you get to the last two stitches and you're going to decrease in the last two stitches. So let me finish this row real quick. I'll show you how to decrease again in case you need a review. So I'm at the last two stitches and we're just going to decrease again. So insert your hook into the first of the last two stitches, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then insert your hook into the final stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. And now you just yarn over and pull through all three loops. So that was a decrease row. You're going to need at least three of these, but 
you might need more, you might need less, depending on how many buttons you plan on using. So be a little flexible here on this part, but we're gonna continue on. So chain one, and we're gonna work just a regular row of single crochets. No decreases, no nothing. So beginning on the first stitch, you're just gonna single crochet all the way across. So after this, I'm gonna work a total of three decrease rows. So I'm gonna complete this single crochet row, then I'm gonna complete a decrease row, follow it with a single crochet row, and then a decrease row, and a single crochet row. So my work is gonna look like this. So that is with a total of three decrease rows, and now I'm gonna take my buttons and I'm just gonna measure them on here. If you use one button, this might be a little bit different, but I wanted to use two, uh, two little buttons and these are about a half inch in diameter, which is about, I think it's 1.3 centimeters. You can use any size button you want. I'll show you how to make the buttonholes for whatever size you need. So take your buttons and place them where you want them to go. So I'm gonna leave two stitches along the end and then you're gonna count the number of stitches across the widest part of the button. So I'm gonna grab both of my buttons and line them up so that I have two stitches on both ends. And then you count the number of stitches in between here. So this button is three stitches across. So I have two stitches along the side, three before the button, two in the center, three along the other button, and two at the end. Try to space them out as evenly as you can. It might not be perfect, but try to space them out as best as you can. All right, so I'm going to chain one, and then I'm gonna turn around, and we're gonna work two single crochets, because that's what I had set up my button for. So we got two single crochets. I said my button was three stitches across, so that means I need to chain three. So that's one, two, three. I'm going to skip three stitches, so it's one, two, three, and then I'm gonna single crochet two because I set up, I set my button so that I had two stitches between each button. So I'm gonna do my first single crochet and then do one more single crochet and then the other button is the same size, so I'm going to chain three, and then I'm going to skip three. There we go, skip three stitches, and then I'm gonna work a single crochet in the remaining two stitches of the row. So remember that this is your project. If you're gonna use a different size button, just work in a similar fashion. Try to space everything out as evenly as you can. It might not be perfect, but that's okay. It's gonna look fantastic anyway, so. Just try it out. All right, so the next row, we're gonna chain one, we're gonna turn our work around, and then we're just gonna single crochet all the way across. So let's begin with our first two single crochets. So there's one, and then there's two. And you're gonna single crochet three because I made a chain three. So if you chained five, then single crochet five. If you chained one, then single crochet one. Just single crochet the same number of stitches that you chained. And then I'm gonna work a single crochet in each of my two single crochets from the previous row. So there's one and there's two. And here's my next little buttonhole. So I'm gonna single crochet three. And then I'm gonna single crochet in each of the last two stitches. There we go. And then just to reinforce the buttonhole, we're gonna make one last row of single crochets. So I'm going to chain one, turn my work around, and complete one more row of single crochets. At the end of this, you're just gonna chain one, leave a nice long tail end of yarn, cut everything, weave all your ends in, and we're gonna complete the second tie. Now for the second tie, you're gonna repeat the steps we just took, except for the buttonhole section. Don't make the buttonhole. So just work those three decreases, and then after that, just work the row of single crochet, just repeat it over and over again until you get the length that you need for that back tie. So to measure it, just try it on as you go. So work a few, um, few rows of single crochets and then try it on. Make sure that you've pulled it nice and tight so that it'll actually hold the top up. Um, and once you get to that length you need, so it's gotta be a length that is comfortable, it's gonna hold the top up, and it overlaps a little bit with the buttonholes because you will need to sew the buttons onto it. Then you stop. So I'm gonna work on those and then I'll show you how to do the neck, uh, the neck ties. So let me complete my second tie and I will see you here in just a moment. All right, so here is that back tie. 
So as you can see, I've made it several rows long. I've now gotten to the end of it. So to finish this off, I'm going to chain one. That's going to make a little knot here at the bottom. I'm going to cut a long tail of yarn. If you're going to use this to sew your button, make sure that it's a really long tail end of yarn. That way you don't have to weave in so many ends. But there you go. So now all you do is weave in any ends that you've got left and you can sew on your button. Make sure that you line up the buttons with the buttonholes before you sew them on. All right, now let's move on to the neckties. Now, this top of the triangle has three stitches. You have to flatten it out so the two stitches along the ends have to be taller than the stitch in the center. So I'm gonna insert my hook here into the first stitch. So there's the center one. I'm gonna work in the one right next to it. So I'm gonna insert my hook, make a loop around it, leave a long tail end of yarn. You're gonna use that to reinforce your stitching later on once you weave in your ends. So we're gonna chain one, drop the tail end of yarn, and then we're gonna chain one more. Now in that same stitch, so right down here, you're gonna crochet a double crochet. So yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and there you go. So you've got that chain two and the double crochet in the same stitch. So this is gonna add a little bit of height. In that center stitch, you're gonna make a single crochet. And now in the last stitch, so the one right next to that, you're gonna make two double crochets. There's one, and then there is two. So now we have a nice even row to work with and we're gonna chain one and we're gonna turn our work around. So from here on out, all you're gonna do is work single crochet rows. And this one again, I can't give you a specific number of rows because it just depends on your size and your fit. So work several rows of single crochets and you're gonna single crochet into every stitch of the row. You should have five single crochets at the end of this. So you might have to crochet right here into this last little stitch. So that might be a little hidden. Don't forget to, uh, to crochet into that one, at least in that first row. That way you have five stitches across. There we go. So the five stitches are gonna make the, this neck strap a little bit wider and a lot more comfortable to wear. So crochet a length however much you need so that the strap ends up in the back, like just behind your neck. So right in the center of your neck. You're gonna make a buttonhole like we did for that back tie in the same way. Only this time we're gonna single crochet one and then we're gonna leave this space since we made the five stitches, we're gonna chain three and all we have to do is just crochet into that final stitch. So single crochet, chain three, skip three, single crochet. Work until you get to the center of the row. Again, try it on as you crochet. Make sure you pull on that so that the strap doesn't hang too low once you're actually wearing it. So complete your second tie. So you're gonna begin it the same way that we did the first one. One side is gonna have a buttonhole, one side is gonna have the button sewed onto it, but that's it. Now all you do is sew on any buttons if you haven't sewed them on already, weave in any ends you still haven't wo woven in, and you're done, and that's it. It was that simple. So I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Don't forget to check out the written pattern. It is available on the website. You can get the PDF. It is full of pictures. I spent tons of time adding pictures to that thing. So there's pictures of the Solomon grid. There are pictures of nearly every step of the process. So go check that out. It is available on the blog. Thank you so much for watching y'all. And if you wanna see any more of my work, don't forget to follow me on Instagram. I will see you all again in the next tutorial. Have a nice week.